Let me share Sophie Germain's remarkable story, particularly focusing on her education and mathematical work. Sophie Germain was born on April 1, 1776, in Paris, France. She was born into a wealthy family. Her father was Ambroise Francois Germain, a silk merchant who later became a director of the Bank of France. The year of her birth coincided with significant historical events, including the American Revolution, though her early life was more directly impacted by the French Revolution, which began in 1789 when she was 13 years old. During this tumultuous period of the French Revolution, young Sophie found refuge in her father's library, where she discovered mathematics through reading books. She died on June 27, 1831, in Paris. Sophie Germain was born in Paris during a time when women were largely excluded from formal mathematical education. Her initial encounter with mathematics came through reading books in her father's library, particularly being inspired by J. Montucla's Histoire des Mathématiques and accounts of Archimedes' life. Her family initially opposed her mathematical studies, even taking away her heat and light at night to prevent her from studying. Undeterred, she would wrap herself in quilts and study by candlelight, often leaving ink frozen in the inkwell. She taught herself Latin and Greek to read classical mathematical works and studied Newton and Euler's works extensively. Unable to attend the École Polytechnique because she was a woman, Germain obtained lecture notes under the pseudonym Antoine Auguste Leblanc, a former student. She submitted work to Joseph Louis Lagrange, who was impressed enough to seek out the true identity of Leblanc. Upon discovering Germain was a woman, he became her mentor. Joseph Louis Lagrange, who lived from 1736 to 1813, was one of the most influential mathematicians of the 18th century. Let me explain his significance and his relationship with Sophie Germain. Born in Turin, Italy, Lagrange became the director of mathematics at the Berlin Academy by the age of 26. He later moved to Paris, where he survived the French Revolution by focusing purely on science. Lagrange made fundamental contributions to calculus, number theory, and celestial mechanics. He created the foundations of analytical mechanics with his masterwork Mécanique Analytique in 1788 and developed the Lagrangian mechanics, which revolutionized our understanding of physical systems. Lagrange discovered Germain's talent through an unusual circumstance. Since women weren't allowed to attend the École Polytechnique, Germain had been submitting work under the pseudonym Monsieur Leblanc. After receiving several impressive mathematical analyses, Lagrange was intrigued enough to seek out this mysterious student. When he discovered that Leblanc was a young woman, rather than rejecting her as many might have done at the time, Lagrange became her mentor and mathematical supporter. He provided her with proper mathematical training, introduced her to other mathematicians, and helped her develop her work on number theory. Why did he support her? Firstly, Lagrange recognized genuine mathematical talent regardless of gender. Germain's initial submissions show deep insight into complex mathematical problems. Secondly, despite the era's prejudices, Lagrange valued intellectual capability over social conventions. He had himself risen to prominence based on merit rather than social connections. Thirdly, through his position at the École Polytechnique and his reputation in Paris, Lagrange could provide Germain with access to mathematical resources and communities she wouldn't otherwise have had. Lastly, both were deeply interested in number theory and the mathematical foundations of physical problems. Germain's work on elastic surfaces aligned with Lagrange's interests in mechanics and mathematical physics. Their collaboration proved particularly important for Germain's work on elastic surfaces. Lagrange's expertise in mechanics helped guide her research, which eventually led to her winning the Paris Academy Prize. The support of such a prominent mathematician was crucial for Germain's career as it gave her credibility in the mathematical community, provided access to current mathematical developments, helped her develop rigorous mathematical methods, and enabled her to correspond with other mathematicians of the time. Lagrange's mentorship of Germain stands as an early example of recognizing and supporting talent regardless of gender in the mathematical sciences, though it would take many more decades before women would gain broader access to mathematical education and recognition. Let's continue with Sophie Germain's key works and contributions. Firstly, her work on Fermat's Last Theorem. She developed an innovative approach to prove Fermat's Last Theorem for a certain class of prime numbers, now called Sophie Germain primes. 
Her work showed that for prime P, if 2P plus 1 is also prime, then the first case of Fermat's last theorem holds true for P. Next, her groundbreaking paper Memoir sur la courbure des surfaces in 1831 laid the foundations for mathematical physics. She studied vibration patterns of elastic surfaces, which became crucial for modern engineering, particularly in the construction of tall buildings and bridges. In number theory, she corresponded extensively with Carl Friedrich Gauss under her male pseudonym sharing significant work in number theory. When Gauss learned her true identity, he praised her noble courage and mathematical genius. In 1816, she won the Paris Academy of Sciences Prize for her work on elastic surfaces, becoming the first woman to do so. Her theory explained the vibration patterns of elastic surfaces, verified through Ernst Kladny's famous experiments. Germain worked largely in isolation without formal training or regular academic interaction. She studied from Euler's works, particularly on number theory, Newton's Principia Mathematica, Adrienne Marie Legendre's Théorie des Nombres, Lagrange's Lectures on Analysis, and Gauss's Disquisitione Arithmetique. Her notes and manuscripts, many unpublished during her lifetime, reveal the depth of her mathematical investigations. These papers, now preserved in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris, show her work on number theory, acoustic vibrations, and elasticity theory. Despite her significant contributions, Germain never held an academic position and worked without institutional support. The University of Göttingen was preparing to award her an honorary doctorate at Gauss's recommendation, but she passed away from breast cancer before receiving it. Given that Sophie Germain lived in the late 18th and early 19th century and worked largely in private, some details about her specific study materials and personal notes may be incomplete in historical records. However, her correspondence with leading mathematicians of her time, particularly Gauss, provides valuable insight into her mathematical development and contributions. Sophie Germain's writings can be found in several locations and archives. Here are the main repositories. Firstly, the Bibliothèque Nationale de France in Paris contains her most significant manuscript collection. It houses her papers in Papiers de Sophie Germain, including unpublished works on number theory and elasticity, and her correspondence with other mathematicians. The archives of the Paris Academy of Sciences hold her prize-winning memoir on elastic surfaces from 1816, original submissions and correspondence related to the prize competition, and various mathematical papers submitted to the Academy. The Göttingen University Library preserves her correspondence with Carl Friedrich Gauss, containing letters written under both her real name and pseudonym. Her key published works include Recherches sur la théorie des surfaces élastiques from 1821, one of her few published works during her lifetime, available in digital format through several academic libraries. Her memoir Sur la courbure des surfaces from 1831 was published in Krell's journal and was her last major mathematical publication. Additionally, Notes sur la manière dont se composant les valeurs de Yetz dans l'équation was published in Krell's journal Fur die Reine und Anjouante Mathematique. In modern collections and republications, Oeuvres Philosophiques de Sophie Germain, edited by H. Stupuy in 1879, contains some of her philosophical writings and is available in several university libraries. The Clara Schumann Archive at the Hochschule für Musik und Theater Felix Mendelssohn, Bartholdy Leipzig, contains some of her correspondence and papers related to music theory. Sophie Germain was a pioneering female mathematician working when women's contributions were often overlooked or not properly archived. I recommend checking with the institutions directly to confirm specific documents' availability and access conditions. For digital access, Gallica, the BNF's digital library, has digitized some of her works. Several academic databases contain scanned copies of her published papers, and the European Cultural Heritage Online Project has digitized some of her correspondence. For researchers interested in studying her work, I recommend contacting the BNF's manuscript department directly working with university libraries that specialize in the history of mathematics, and consulting the archives of the Paris Academy of Sciences, which requires special permission for access. The preservation and cataloging of her work continue to be an active area of historical research, with new documents occasionally being discovered or properly attributed to her. Thank you for watching.